actually had to stop by the store this morning to get some coffee. We were out of coffee at the house. So I stopped by there, got me a cup of coffee, came here, made coffee. We're good. Welcome back, everybody. Monday morning briefing, episode number 33. It's Monday morning, May the 24th. We had a really great week last week. We got a lot of stuff done. It was my little girl's graduation from kindergarten. And so I'm a little boys from preschool, I guess. They didn't really do a ceremony deal for them. Um, they did give out awards and stuff. So we went to that last week and that was a lot of fun. So they're out for the summer. So now they're gonna be here in the afternoons or midday or whatever. And I can put them to work washing saddles, sweeping the floor, you know, typical stuff. Get some free help out of them. They've got some stuff planned for the summer as far as little, little things they're going to go do and stuff like that. So, But the kids are out for the summer here, and so they're really excited. I got a lot of stuff done this week uh, on the saddle. I'll show you that in just a minute. We got some of the repairs done and out of here. The one with the padded seat, it's gone. I think I posted it on Instagram, so if you're following our Instagram stories, you saw that. But that saddle's done. The guy that owns it got it back, and he really likes it, so that was good. We got that one out. We've got a couple more that we're going to try to break down this week and get those washed. Um, and then the other one that we washed, we've got it. I'll show that one to you. We've got it all put back together. I've just got to make some stirrups for it. So we got those lined uh, Saturday. Saturday as well, I decided to go ahead and get started on all the knife sheath orders that we have. We had quite a few kind of stack up. We don't do a lot of knife sheaths, but I'll do some for every once in a while, just depending on, you know, if they're local, that kind of deal, because I have to have the knife in order to do a fixed handled knife sheath. So, but we, we've always done a few of them and we'll do them. Uh, if people want to pay for them, I'll, I'll certainly do do one or two here or there. But I can't take on very many because um, they're 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 their own animal, and you've got to pattern every one of those up separately. So I ended up having these kind of stack up on me. and decided to get those done. Got some wallets going as well. Um, some of these these two here, I'm just going to put these on the website. Uh, I just want kind of wanted to play around with some new tooling patterns, and uh, this one here is going to have an outside pocket, and we may. We may do a project video on one of these at some point, but they're really not that much more difficult than doing our normal money clip wallet. You're just adding a pocket on the outside. Um, and then we've got a bunch of customers ones here that we've tooled over the weekend and kind of got those ready to, to put together. We've got to do some dye and paint work and stuff on them first, and then we can assemble those. As far as the bag, um, I had my machine on that Cobra. You've got to change some parts out in order to be able to sew stirrups. And so I had done that, and then I was getting ready to start doing the gussets for this, for the Pony Express bag or the, or the briefcase. By the time I got to the point of getting ready to do it, it was already kind of towards the end of the day, and I was gonna have to change those parts out. So I ended up not doing it, and then over the weekend just lost track. So hopefully this week I can get these gussets in here, get this bag headed to uh, completion, and that way we can get that video done. And, uh, and hopefully as well as a pattern pack, like we talked about last week. I think it's gonna work work out well. They're doing some proofs for me right now at the printer, and so hopefully we'll have those here pretty quick, and we can maybe start offering some bigger projects, bigger patterns, bigger pattern packs, more printed pattern packs, if you're interested in those. We did get a lot of emails um, from you guys that said that I, I'd be interested in printed packs more than the digital and this and that, so that's great. Um, I don't really care either direction that it goes, um, as long as you get the pattern in the format that you like, but it seemed like about, from what I could gather, there's gonna be a significant amount of people that would just rather have me mail them the pattern. So there's nothing wrong with that. That'll work out good. As soon as we get those proofs in, as long as they look right and everything looks, looks good to go, we're gonna go ahead and start working our companion packs. Like I said, we'll do the project patterns first, and then um, that way we can catch those up to where we have digital and printed on both of those, and then um, and then kind of go from there. So I know we're only in May, and nobody is thinking about Christmas right now, and it would be crazy to start putting up Christmas decorations and start preparing even in retail in May um, for Christmas. But I would say that if I if you do have some fall shows or if, if you have like some if your business you kind of do most of your stuff during Christmas time and you're trying to kind of get ahead of that right now is a good time to start thinking about you know because we've got so much time before we really need to worry about it um, going through the summer but could we go ahead and start making up an item here or there to add to our collection for already already made stuff for Christmas to try to mitigate some of those custom orders. And that's what we're gonna try to do. Um, every year I say I'm not gonna take a lot of custom orders, but I've got so many customers that have been with us for so long and that order from us every year that it's hard for me to say no. So we, end up do, we, we do end up taking a lot of custom orders um, during Christmas time. But I wanna also have a lot of things that are already pre-made, especially now that we have the retail floor 
Um, we have a store, you know, right here on Main Street so people can come in. This Christmas, I want to be able to have have a pretty good amount of stuff. I mean, it doesn't have to be completely stocked with $200,000 worth of inventory, but I would like to build up enough product to where we've got a good selection of wallets and belts and maybe a few bags or some stuff like that for people that do come by and just want to do Christmas shopping or maybe they're on our website and they want to get something for somebody for Christmas. So that's just, I, I'm not saying we need to get ready for Christmas right now and start getting everything lined up, but I'm just, because usually with retail, you start around you know, late August, early September, somewhere around there, you start getting it on your mind for Christmas because um, most people start early and it seems like it starts earlier and earlier every year. Um, but I think for us, well, what I'm going to do and you can try it if you if you want but i think it'd be a lot easier going through the summer is to maybe tool up one or two extra belts um a week or maybe every other week just just tool up or make up some little projects that you're wanting to make anyway that you're wanting to try and go ahead and put those you know either just in a box somewhere where they're safe and and hold them until christmas or go ahead and put them on your website or your etsy account or whatever you're doing however you're marketing your 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 stuff that you're selling and that way you've got a little bit more inventory because usually i don't i don't ever use to think about it till like november i'm like man i ought to make up you know a dozen wallets and just put them out there people will buy them because it's christmas time but in november i don't have time to make a dozen wallets i've got orders to do and i've got things going on and you've got events and families in town and stuff like that so that's not the time to really think about it so i'm just kind of bringing it up right now i know it's way too early to start thinking about christmas but you might just kind of think about making a little bit of inventory through the summer and, and it might, uh, because there's always those people that call in December and they want something custom, they know you're booked up, they know they're not gonna be able to order something, but they wanna know what do you have already made. And most of us, usually we don't have a whole lot, um, but I would like to, to kind of start changing that slowly but surely. But inventory made, inventory set up is, um, it's an investment, you do that and you've got it and it's not gonna go bad. It's not like what we make expires. So you can make it up put them in a box where they're safe. You know, that's the biggest deal is, is from a liability issue. If you just put them on a bench and they get dye spilled on them or they get they get dirty or, or dented or scratched or whatever. So you want to be sure that you got them somewhere where they're going to look good when you pull them out towards the fall. But that's just an idea. That's what we're going to start doing. I'm going to start trying to just make up one or two extra things a week maybe, even if it's just one wallet. But just something small, something that's not going to, not going to take me away from my normal schedule because you know this business you, you usually have orders to work on all year long and especially with us with the saddles it's hard to find a lot of extra time so that's one thing that we're going to try but if any of y'all been following us on instagram you've probably noticed that we have been getting a ton of rain down here in molten uh down here just kind of along the gulf coast and and south of houston and, and right around houston and all friends up in bryan college station as well have been getting a lot of rain we have gotten, I think since this whole deal started in the last, over the last seven days or so, I think we've gotten well over 12 inches. Um, it's hard to tell because we dumped the gauge and then sometimes the gauge is full, full, and you don't know how much ran out. And um, it's just, it's just been crazy. So the ground cannot take any more water. Like everything that's, every time we, we got two and a half more inches yesterday and it just ran straight off into the ditches and everything. The nice thing is we know how our place drains. So the place where we're living, um, having a good rain like that is a really good way of kind of seeing where your problems are, where, where you may need to improve on the drainage a little bit and, and where, where you actually, it's draining out really well. And so kind of, that's kind of where we're at right now, just kind of looking at that. Um, as far as the in town, in town has gotten, I've never seen the city have this much water before, but it, it drains off pretty well. The shop did, the back end of the shop did get some water in it. Not nothing bad, but we had the building beside us is shorter than ours. And so it stops about where the metal building starts. And so their roof line isn't guttered. And so that water coming off basically caused a big pool of water in the alley. It's kind of like a little walkway alley between us. And that water got up high enough to where it could come up the concrete berm and then up inside the metal flashing and into the shop. It wasn't real bad, but it did kind of drain just a little bit in there. Um, it wasn't really anything, it didn't get any leather wet or anything like that. It's just I had a little stream of water that kind of came in on the floor and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from until I finally figured out it was behind one of the racks, one of the machines back there, and it was just kind of percolating out. 
Um, other than that, we had the, kind of the same issue that we had with the snow because the ridge cap on the building is not plugged or sealed up. And so just like that snow kind of blew in there, we had that snow line running down the middle of the, of the building back there. We had the same thing happen with this rain because it was blowing really, really hard. And um, we had a lot of sideways rain and it was just a lot of bad storms. And so it kind of blew in through there. Again, didn't get on anything where I have everything kind of placed. No leather really got wet to speak of. Um, the bench got some water on it, no big deal. But that is something we're gonna have to look into. I'm gonna have to have somebody come out and uh, get that ridge cap kind of sealed up just so that we don't get that in the future. Hopefully we won't get snow again to where we have to worry about that. But the rain deal, that's the second or third time we've had a bad storm where it has blown in like that. And so I wanna kind of get that taken care of just so that I don't have to worry about it. But they're calling for more rain this week um, up until I think Wednesday or Thursday. So we're just kind of waiting and seeing. Right now it looks good out there. It's not, not any rain at all, um, but it looks like it could. So I don't think we're completely done. We'll probably get a little bit more before this is out, but we're not gonna complain because traditionally we're wishing for rain come June. So right now I think we're pretty good. We've got, got a pretty good jump start on the summertime. And so we should be good on rain, but the clutch wallet project video went out last week and i want to thank everybody that bought the pattern pack it was it was a very well received video a lot of people emailed me and said they really liked it um, got the pattern pack uh, even seen a couple people that had tagged me that were actually starting one of the projects and uh, are starting that project and we're going to go ahead and give that a shot so i'm excited i'm pretty proud of that that material pack or that pattern pack just because of the interiors i think they're I think they go together well. I think they look professional and I think they work out great. Um, again, if you are gonna do that, if you if you saw that project video for the new clutch wallet and you're gonna try to make it um, using my pattern or just trying to do one on your own, either way, I would highly suggest using either kangaroo or that goat skin. But that material is gonna be the best because of its thickness and its strength. And so it's got a, it's, it's only about a two ounce, maybe two, three ounce, but it feels really good. It's, it's got a firmness to it. It's gonna look professional, it's gonna look clean. And you've got so many little pieces and so many layers in there that if you do anything heavier than that, it's just gonna end up way too thick and it's not gonna fold really nice. So that's what I would suggest is uh, going from there and kind of using that. Um, either goat skin or kangaroo. There may be something else out there, but that's the two things that I found and that's the two that I like the most. And I'm really happy with the goat skin so far. Um, I've made a couple of wallets and um, with it, like we said last week, and that stuff is really good. Uh, like I said, I talked to Seloy, mentioned earlier that I'm, I got some more coming, but um, he said a bunch of, bunch of folks have been calling him and kind of getting some of that from him. And, um, and so he, he wanted to say thanks, and so that was good. I'm glad y'all went over there and got some from him. I don't know how much he keeps in stock, so hopefully he can keep up And um, if you're wanting some or whatever. Like I said, the goat skins are not super expensive, but the shipping is gonna be expensive. Um, so you're probably better off ordering three or four of them at a time, just because you're gonna pay the same as shipping probably on four as you would on one. So, um, and the shipping can be more than the one, um, the one sheepskin hide, just because of the way He's got to put it in a box or whatever. You can't can't just put it in a little box and wad it up in there. So um, keep that in mind. Anytime, that's a big deal with this deal is like shipping. If you're going to order something, which most of us have to order everything, everything has to be shipped in. You can't just run down to Walmart and buy most of what we use. I would kind of suggest that to keep an eye on your shipping cost. It's, it's cost of doing business. There's really not a lot you can do about it, but you can try to spread that out over more items. So if you maybe can get everything from one comp everything that you're needing on your list, if you can get that from like one company and have them ship it all, even if they're a little higher on one item or another, but if they're gonna put it all in one box and ship it one time versus getting these three items from this guy, one item from this guy, and two items from this guy, you're paying three different shipping fees. So even if you save $2 on that one item from Joe Schmo over here, you're gonna pay for it in the shipping. So just kind of kind of keep that in mind. I try to get everything at one time, like I order from Weaver usually once a month and I'll get a whole deal and I'll kind of go through the catalog and make sure I'm not missing something or there's something that I'm not thinking about that I might need that I can go ahead and put on this shipment just to try to cover those shipping costs. Because shipping costs have really gotten high. Everything's gotten high right now. Um, not just lumber and, and gas, but everything, um, even, and especially shipping. We noticed that last year that shipping costs were on the rise. And so, again, it's part of doing business. People want 
something from us and they want it shipped, that's part of it. You've got to pay for shipping. Everybody understands that. But like even on my saddles, I shipped that one to Arizona and it was, I think it was over $100, $120, something like that to ship that saddle where I can remember three or four years ago, I was paying probably 75, 80 bucks to ship a saddle. So I don't know what's what the cause of that is. I'm sure there's an explanation for all that, but just got to keep an eye on shipping because it is it is getting higher. So anytime you're ordering stuff, just try to package it all up together. Like I said, saving a couple bucks on one item just because this one guy's cheaper on it, you're going to pay probably that much or more just in the added shipping cost. So keep an eye on that. But let's check out the repair saddle right quick. All right, here's that saddle that we washed. This is the second one that we washed and we got it all cleaned up. It cleaned up really, really well. We put new stirrup leathers in it. Um, they were looking, they look pretty shabby. Probably still could have got a little life out of them, but if they're in my shop, I'd rather go ahead and get them done. That way the guy doesn't have to leave his saddle with me anymore. He had these custom conchos, was missing one. One had broken off or got ripped off somehow. And so what we did was we just put two on the front, two on the back, and then I did double rosettes right here by the ears and that way it kind of looks balanced. We've got new billets, uh, rear flank billets that'll go on there, a new off billet for the front, new Latigo, we'll put those on. But this saddle has been washed, oiled, and conditioned. And if you go back a few Monday briefing videos, you'll see what it kind of looked like before, but we used our clean oil and polish process that we have the three video series that we showed you how we do that. That's the exact process I used on this saddle and you can see how much better it looks and uh, how much cleaner it looks, how everything kind of drapes like it should. It's not anything, you know, your seats are flipped up from being dry and the housings are in position where they should be and laying down nicely. So the, that clean oil and polish should really, really make a saddle feel a lot nicer and last a lot longer. So, but we also have stirrups for this. We went ahead and made him some new stirrups because his his looked pretty rough. And so I think I already threw them away. They were. They were pretty pretty rough, pretty wore down. So we're making them a new new set of those. So but that saddle's about ready. It's ready to go once the stirrups are done. And if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen that we got a new shelf for the tooling bench. I had to do something because this corner's kind of dark and I really didn't have super good lighting. So I've always had that, um, just that studio light over here just to kind of shine some light down. I've still got some shadow. We've got a shop light, an LED shop light underneath this. I thought it would be plenty to light up, but my bench, my seating area is so far away from it that I'm still getting a shadow right where my hands are um, when I'm tooling. And so I'm probably going to get a couple gooseneck lights or something. I haven't figured out quite yet how to, how to fix that problem but we're gonna figure out some way to get a little bit more light over here. But all in all, it's really good. My friend Jared here in town, uh, he made this for me. He's a carpenter and does construction and remodels and stuff like that. But I asked him, I didn't, I, I'm not really good with making my cabinetry and stuff like that. I wanna learn it, but I thought one day I said, hey, do you have time for this to even fool with this? He said, yeah, absolutely. So so he came by and we measured that and he just made this, this cabinet box. It's a separate deal and it's got some uh, L brackets underneath that hold it in place, but it just mounts on the wall easy enough if I want to move the bench I can dismount it from the from the wall and we can move it around or whatever it's not actually attached to the bench made it nice because I can get a lot of this stuff up here uh, up on top and get it off that bench so I'm still kind of sorting it out and getting it to kind of organize but all in all I really like it it gave me a spot right here too where I can hang hang more of my patterns I've got all my rulers here I've got some straight edges and then my long straight edge there and then some more saddle part patterns that I use a lot these were hanging just along the wall, but it's kind of had to reach pretty good ways for them. Now they, these are all right here, but it works out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I may actually build another one of these. Him and I talked about that, about maybe doing another one even longer for over these two workbenches, which I think would be pretty handy. Um, we're just going to kind of look at that and wait and see, but I might have him do a couple more just longer, and that way we'll have kind of an overhead. These benches used to have a second shelf on top, but sometimes when I'm working on saddles, I will actually put the saddle on the bench to sew my rig ins or do different things. And so that second shelf was actually in the way because it wasn't high enough. And so sometimes I'd scratch a fender or scratch a housing or something like that because I was rolling the saddle around on the bench. So years ago, I'd taken the tops of these off and that way they were just open topped and they, they tend to work a little better. But I think I like the shelf idea, maybe a little higher. Claudia won't be able to reach anything up there if I make them up where I want them, though. I'll get her a step ladder. Should be all right. And then here's our 
ranch saddle. We got the seat in. Uh, I actually did this yesterday. Um, well, I started it on Friday, got it pulled in Thursday or Friday, and then got it all finished up this weekend and actually got it glued in. So, and this trimmed up first thing this morning when I got here. I got this all trimmed up and shaped. We're doing a short inch and uh, it's about an inch and three eighths cantle roll here or Cheyenne roll. And so we'll get the binder on there. I'm going to add a little bit of buck stitching like we did here on the swell. It'll have that there also with that little bead line. I just did that little bead line on there. Just, it looks nice. I got it from Terry Henson and he does that on a lot of his saddles. And uh, we've used bead lines for, for years, but usually on a double bead border of some kind, either serpentine or, or something like that. And I noticed, you know, obviously being an admirer of his work, I noticed a lot of that he does just, just that bead line. And I've always thought it looked really, really clean. So. Um, we've done a couple of them. I don't want to do it too much just because that's kind of kind of his deal But on this saddle, I thought it was fitting and uh, Hopefully he won't mind too much, but I think I think it looks good Just kind of something to just break it up because this guy just wanted all the leather smooth So everything is smooth except the seat and the back of the kennel. So it's just kind of kind of different um, Than than what you would normally see Usually we do the seat and fenders uh, rough out but here on this one, you know, fenders are slick. Like I said, everything on this saddle is slick except for the kennel back and the seat. And and I just think it's kind of kind of something different. And so that's what I wanted to do for him. And so this one's almost done. We'll get the binder on it, hopefully glued on here this morning and let it dry. And then I'll sew it either late this evening or tomorrow. And then this saddle will be ready to start getting some oil. And we've got all the little parts done. And I've got to make a flank cinch. But all the billets are done, all that. So this saddle will be on its way to being done and going to work. Here's those stirrups for the uh, repair saddle over there. We've already got the liners on. Got the bolts run through and tightened down. I just got to cut this off. And then we'll grind them down and paint them in place so that that little nut doesn't come off. I do have a video on covering stirrups, so I, I just bring that up just in case for any people that are new here that don't aren't aware of that. If you're wanting to know how stirrups are covered or you're wanting to cover a pair yourself, I do have a video showing you how I do that. It's an older video, so you have to go way back in the archives, but there's an older video there on uh, covering stirrups. Or just go to our website and search stirrups, and I think that article where that video is will probably pop up. But these are nettle stock, so we get those from Nettles in Madisonville, Texas. That's just who I've used for probably well over 10 years and uh, love the, the stirrups that they do. And now this one in particular, they have their traditional 3-inch deep roper, but this is the 3-inch classic, and it comes up straight on the sides. They, their newer one kind of has a little bend to it. I don't know why, but I don't prefer that one. I don't really have a particular reason. It's just a personal preference. I'd rather have the side wall of that stirrup straight. I'll show you on that. This is one of them here. So this is what they call their blanks. And so they don't have any varnish, any finish on there. It's a, it's a thinner lamination so that the stirrup's not so big when you cover it. They're still really strong. We've used these stirrups for years. Um, they're, they're, they're absolutely great for what we do. Um, they're not cheap. So if you're looking for a $15 stirrup, don't call them because they're not going to be that cheap. Um, they, but they're well worth the money in my opinion. They make a really clean product. But as you, if you'll see here, the sides come in straight. And these are called classics. If you call Nettles and want to order some of these uh, for your roping saddles, you will order the three inch deep roper classic style. And that's what you'll have to tell them. Um, the newer ones, like I said, right about here under the bolt, they kind of just turn out just a little bit. And again, I don't really have a particular reason. I just personally prefer them to be straight like that. And so that's what I use. But use what you prefer. There's nothing wrong with the stirrups from Weaver, the galvanized bound stirrups. Those are great too. I've used those for years um, on certain projects. I still use those for different, different applications for certain people. That's what they prefer. But um, my stirrup of choice is gonna be Nettles. So that's who I use. Madisonville, Texas, Nettles country, I think. Uh, if you just search nettle stirrups, you'll find them. You'll find their home website there on the Google machine. But check those out and check out my video. Like I said, I do have a video that shows you how I build those stirrups or cover those stirrups completely. Um, and also, if you're ordering the stirrups with the Monel or the stainless on the outside or the brass from Weber stirrups, she uses a lot of nettle stocks. Um, she'll, that's where she gets her stirrups from, uh, the preferred stirrups that she likes to use. 
Um, and so when we get some of those from her, the stirrup, if you look at it, it'll say nettles in there. And um, I hadn't ordered any from her in a, in a couple of years, but uh, that's what everyone I've ever gotten from her. We've done quite a few of those stirrups from Weber stirrups and, and uh, there she does a fantastic job. So check out Weber stirrups if, you, uh, if you're looking for some of the brass or stainless steel bound stirrups as well. As far as Lost Trade Podcast, we didn't have an episode last week, but we will this week, hopefully. Um, we just have to see. Scheduling is scheduling, and when it happens, it happens. Like I said, we try to go every week, but sometimes it's twice a month, uh, three times a month, something like that. But uh, hopefully that episode will be out this week. Keep an eye on my Instagram feed because I will post once it's live. I will let you know. But if you're already subscribed to us on Apple or Spotify, then you'll get a notification whenever we post that episode. So be sure and do that. If you don't know what Apple or Spotify or the Google machine is, you can also go to our website at dgsaddlery.com. At the top of our website, there's a button that says Lost Trade Podcast. If you've got a computer in your shop with some little speakers that you can hear out of, uh, while you're working, you can just click that Lost Trade Podcast button. It'll pull up the page for the uh, for the podcast, and there'll be a bunch of players for each individual interview. You just pick one you want to listen to, click the play button. It'll play right there. You don't have to do anything fancy. It'll just it'll just play it for you right there. So check that out. That's all I really got for you this week. We're gonna go ahead and get back at it. I've got a lot of projects to do. Keep an eye on Instagram. Keep an eye on the website. We are adding some new products this week. And hopefully we'll get some of these other material packs on there and stuff like that. And so you'll be ready to do that. If you haven't already, sign up for the Leathercraft newsletter so you don't miss anything. Otherwise, we'll see you next week in the Monday Morning Briefing.